This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Hey guys, in this chapter we're going to talk about those wonderful little inventions in Photoshop that allow us to do non-destructive changes in editing to an image called adjustment layers. Adjustment layers have been out for a long time, almost so long that we kind of forget when Photoshop was new and the world was young and innocent that we didn't have them and we did destructive editing. Go into your exercise files for this chapter and you're going to see some images. Actually, we picked these images, they're really cool, from a company called Photospin. And they've got some really good stuff out there if you guys want to check them out. You can go out to photospin.com. Check out what they've got. Good stuff. Let's open up this one right here. It's a very colorful image of some cows. Now you'll notice we're only at like 16.7%. You can see that right up here. So if I come over here and pop my zoom tool, which means give me 100%, we're looking at cows up close and personal. Let's take this back down to the hand tool. Double click the hand tool, takes it back to fit into the screen. What are we going to do here? Well, I want to show you what happened before we had adjustment layers. And in addition, they have changed slightly in CS6. Again, years ago, we wanted to do something to this image. We would go up to the word image on the pull down menu and go down to adjustments, and they're still there. There's all the adjustments, and maybe we want to. Oh, let's do something simple. Go to desaturate, and we will desaturate the image. But that's destructive editing. If you'll notice over here, we have actually changed the image itself. So I can press undo, Command Z, obviously, and it's back to the way it was. But let's say I, oh, saved it, closed it, reopened it. That boat sailed. I can no longer change it. I hope I have a copy. Adjustment layers, been around for a while, give us the ability to control the process. So let's do this. Let me bring the layers panel up here so we can see it, kind of isolated so we know what we're talking about. Adjustment layers are actually started or begun from the layers panel. Actually, let me move that over here because something's going to happen on the other side. I can come down to this button right here, and when I click it, there are all your adjustment layers. You got all the same ones you see in that pull down menu. I can come over here though and do the same thing in this panel. By clicking one of these buttons, I can generate an adjustment layer if I want to do it that way. So you've got a couple of ways we can do this. Let's do it from the layers panel first. So we come into here and we decide maybe we want to do that desaturate kind of thing again. So we go into U and saturation right here. Now, one of the differences you saw it a second ago is that instead of the adjustment coming up in the adjustments panel, it used to. It now appears in the properties panel right here. Same controls, but in a different place. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you do things. So if I come over here now and go into, say, saturation and pull that down, it was a pretty colorful image. I'm going to pull down the saturation, say something like that, and that's it. I close this panel. I save the document, I come back tomorrow and go, you know, I think I overdid that. I better go back to the original. Well, we already have the original. I think you know this. It's right here. This is like looking at the image through a pair of glasses. And the glasses that we have on have taken out some of the saturation. If we want to come back and work on this one again, all you have to do is double click right here and this will pop right back up. I don't care if it's 10 years later. And we can further modify the image or let me go ahead and close that by clicking that little double arrow up there. If we just don't want it at all, get rid of the adjustment layer. Just basically drag it to the trash can, and you're back to normal. Non-destructive editing has been really a goal of Adobe for a lot of years. And every version of the program that comes out, they get a little better at allowing us to manipulate images without actually changing them. Let me show you one or two more adjustments here. We're just getting a start. If you come up to this button again, you're going to see at the top. Now these three at the top, solid color, gradient, and pattern, are three of the most aggressive adjustment filters that you will have. For example, if we go to solid color, it is going to create a layer 
of nothing but that one color. You say, well, how did you get this color? Now, here's a trick. If you know you're going to use that adjustment, make sure that your foreground color down here is the color that you want, and that's the color that you're going to get. If you don't like it, you can always change it over here. Let's say we're happy. Let's go ahead and click OK. So we have this solid color. What do we do with it? Well, we could, well, I suppose, change the opacity. But if we do that, what it looks like to me is you're looking at the image through like a muddy window. It doesn't really look that great. Let's take that back to 100. One of the ways that we can maybe faux age an image, I suppose, would be to layer it with, say, something like a sepia. And that's kind of a sepia color. But the trick would be using a blending mode as opposed to opacity. And we talked about blending modes in a previous chapter. If we go to the word normal, you've got all these different blending modes. The best blending mode to use, almost without exception, if you're trying to colorize an image, is the word color right down here. And in doing so, it creates an image with this, well, whatever color it is, the sepia color, and in a sense begins to, I suppose, age the image. Now, there's other things we can do to create the age, and there are a dozen other ways to do it. But adjustment layers allow us to do whatever we want to do in a very organized way, in a very non-destructive way. And that's where the power is. On to the next.